Welcome, guys, to this review of uh, Nerd Rage's Pyramethamine Synthesis. We're back with Reform Labs, and he's actually reviewing this in order to replicate this synthesis, like, completely. Magnesium. Did uh, I? I think I told you about the uh, anodes from for water heaters. I believe those work. What's going on with these cats? I think they're playing rough again. Yeah, they are. I just came to check on the cats. They're playing rough. They always do this. Okay. Anyway, so magnesium is your only issue, right? What do they use the magnesium for to make sodium? Yeah, it makes sense. You know, you can also make sodium with lithium. That's another. But if you want to really do this process, you need magnesium. I know. It's kind of pointless, too. Yeah, it's just magnesium. Oh, I'm also going to tell you something. If you've watched this synthesis in detail, his, cy his, his cyanide synthesis is not synthesis grade. What is up with that cat? One second. Turns out the cat is fucking the other. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, re redo, restart, restart, restart. Because I can't put this on YouTube. In fact, I can't even save this. That's gonna be editing. Forget that. Actually. Actually, I don't think it's too bad, right? Just forget it. Let's continue. <laughs> well, it's a stream. Anything can happen. Yeah. So, yeah, water treatment anodes weren't an option, right? N neither is those survival fire starters that are made of magnesium metal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the only, that's the only hope, though, really. Or, there's an option, by the way. You know, in Nerd Rage's uh, video, he used he said that aluminum can be used for drying, right? But it does not participate in the reaction. If you remember, what you can do is is mix, make get the furnace, melt magnesium and aluminum alloy, and just break it because it's super brittle. You can grind it down with an ordinary mortar and pestle to a fine powder, the magnesium alloy. Then the aluminum itself won't really you know partake but you have to make sure to add the minimal amount we have to find the ratio of aluminum to magnesium because if there's too much aluminum it will kind of drown out the magnesium you know similar to how they in quartz like like silver into or not silver or copper into gold right and if they have if you have too much gold if when we think of aluminum as the gold right if you have too much gold, it won't react with the solution. So it's kind of the same thing. Think about that. That could be a potential way. You could just buy like a ton of water treatment anodes, um, aluminum foil, get the crucible and melt them all together and cast this large 
bullion of you know magnesium alloy and just uh like ha hammer it out and and put it in a blender and quite literally oh no don't put it in a blender that was a joke So yeah, that's a one possible way for you to get magnesium metal. You know, it might not be pure, but it will be, you know, pure enough to use in the synthesis. And since you know how much aluminum you added exactly, you can you can put that into the calculation of the requirement of magnesium in order to do the synthesis. You know, if you want it to be exactly as, you know, how how he did it in the video. And I was gonna talk about his cyanide synthesis. In this, uh, I have to say that you remember Nerd Rage said that the cyanide he got from the, you know, process of converting, uh, you know, sodium cyanate into cyanide at high temperature, right? He said that the sodium carbonate and bicarbonate impurities made the synthesis fail. And the only way he got it to work was creating... I think he was creating Prussian blue, purifying that, and then quite literally cooking that down, which is a pain. Because, you know, the thing is, you have to really make sure it's free from any other stuff. I mean, there is another way to do this, but let, let's not. And the way to do that is remember the sodium hydroxide crap, right? You know, and, and you could technically fucking convert that batch into hydrogen cyanide gas and just bubble that through cold sodium hydroxide, but let's not. That's called how to literally, that, that would be suicidal. You know, let's honestly try it. I think they will, because I'm going to tell you right now. We, we can do this as a review, right? But he failed and he had to make Prussian blue. That was the difficult part. You know, I wonder. Maybe we can try something. You know, I think if we add iron to our reaction mixture, do you think we might be able to create Prussian blue in C2? Like the moment we quench it? Like, and then we could just filter that and just reheat it again, you know? with excess NaOH again, like do a two-stepper, I think it might be possible. There, there must be some way. We'll have to look into it. Or buy it, because playing around with cyanide is like, you know, bad. Because you don't want... How does... Wa oh, someone in the chat. How does water pressure work? Well... Water is an incompressible fluid, therefore the amount of pressure is proportional to the amount of force exerted on the water. If we're talking about gravity, that would be hydrostatic equilibrium. Basically, it's based on the amount of weight of water above a given depth of where the uh, place of measurement is. If we're talking about any forward pressure, that depends on whatever weight is pushing on top of the water, assuming the water has nowhere to go. Yeah, Silver Dragon, that's the, you know, it's based on the density, the, you know, whatever force, whether that's gravity or whatever, and then the height, or the col height of the column of water. That's for hydrostatic equilibrium. For the other one, well, you have external forces for that, but... I can look that up right now, but what I've said was over the top of my head. Oh yeah, anyway, it's continue. A viewer just asked a question about water pressure. And, you know. Yeah. Me neither. You know, it's like if you get... <laughs> just, just... Okay. 
Yeah, check the boiling point. Yeah, that's kinda. Oh my god. Nah, nah, nah. Doable, but scary. Like, like... Yeah, yeah, That, but that's fine, to be honest. Just find out if it does. But honestly, I prefer not to do this, but this is like a... Oh, yeah. But, you know, let's not mess with cyanide if we don't have to. I mean, we can try the synthesis, and we can even try his method and maybe improve it. Maybe we can salt it out more. I don't know. But I honestly think that there might be some other impurities in his cyanide. Maybe from the cyanuric acid, maybe. Because I know that cyanuric acid can sometimes form other byproducts when you when you pyrolyze it you know that's what i was going to say like melamine is something that definitely will form <laughs> No, I don't know how you can remove melamine, but I'm, melamine is going to wreck any sort of chemistry that you're going to hope to be able to do in this uh, with, with the cyanide you get. Unless we can selectively remove melamine. Maybe you should look into that and maybe we can improve it and actually make a synthesis using, you know, homemade cyanide work. Because that doesn't just help him. That helps other chemists because cooking down Prussian blue is cursed you know like Uh, I have another idea. It's actually quite quite brilliant. You know what we should do? We should, when we form sodium cyanate, right? In C2, it reacts with carbon to form sodium cyanide. What if we do the two se steps separately? Like, what if we extract pure sodium cyanate? Right from the mix from the reaction mixture without putting carbon yet, quite literally, we allow this to form sodium cyanate and whatever crap byproducts are there. Then, I know, I know, I know. So basically, in this, yeah, yeah, in this step. We separate out the sodium cyanate from the rest of the junk and do and either maybe form some iron compound with it or stick with a sodium compound since we're gonna form this into cyanide and from the carbothermic reduction anyway. I think if we do that, if we find a way to separate the rest of the other crap from the sodium cyanate, we can have a non-toxic, safe way to separate the two compounds before turning it into deadly poison. How does that sound? If if we figure that out, we could get we could make synthesis grade sodium cyanide from you know from a homemade thing that isn't messing with with uh, iron, you know cyanide salts which you know granted it is the best way but i don't really want to filter goop because the prussian blue is gonna be like a thick goo <laughs> 
But this is a possibility. Yeah, I know. It's not that bad. But like making it, when you make it, you end up with this, you know, it's going to, that's another option. Or yeah, we can do this thing, this two-step, you know, furnace option. Ah, uh, yeah, we don't want those two things together, honestly. Maybe we can have a mix of carbon and aluminum. Think about it. The aluminum could help with the heating. Like, it could. Yeah. It's... Ah, oh, yeah, that's gonna be kind of, you know, iffy. Wow, you know what we call this small scale trial and error? Why not? Yeah, I know. If we if we calculate it, we can find out the exact heat released and then, you know, from there get the ratio. Like we could find out the heat released when we use carbon versus what happens when we use aluminum, right? And and then, you know, we create like a ratio between those two. And for sure, I think it's just gonna be linear if we assume it, you know, like that. I mean it's it's a bad assumption, but I'm hoping it's it's at least gonna give us some sort of ballpark. Hope nothing else weird happens with those two. Imagine. But usually carbon and aluminum wouldn't react together anyway with each other. So, you know, I'm pretty sure it would be fine. <clears throat> Honestly, I'd only, re you know... Yeah, I, I w you know, let's, so yeah, several ways to improve his cyanide step, or at least do our own research to see if, whether or not we can do something else. All right, so we can move on to the next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw his video, and there was definitely charring occurring during this uh, step. You know. Ah, oh, yeah. See, this is messy. Dean Stark gets a mixture of uh, azeotropes with the final method using what was it? Ferrous. Okay, just lower that because we can stalk over it. We already know what he's going to say. <laughs> That's a little bit. Yeah, like maybe like, like 25 or so, 10. Let, let's play it. Yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. I can... Yeah, yeah, that's good enough. Let's play it. Yeah, yeah. It's... Yeah, it's fine. Let's go. Steel wool. Toluene. You know, his, his azeotropic separation step has to be done multiple times just to get it pure, if you remember. Yeah, essentially. You think we, we can actually figure out 
based on the ratios of his thing, how much we need, you know? Because that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anhydrous ferrous chloride's pretty easy to make. I've done it. I guess just for fun, I even decide to make the ferrous chloride with membrane electrolysis. No, I'm serious. Just for fun, I did that. It works. It's retarded, though. You could just use uh, hydrochloric acid and steel wool to make it. But I just wanted to see just how much mean power I got, you know? Through. Yeah, but like you kind of have to separate out the other crap, you know. <laughs> If you can't get hydrochloric acid well, you know. Um I also think his uh reaction chamber is not very suitable for this reaction. You saw previously it spilled like crazy, right? Look at this mess. There must be a better way. Damn. You know, I'm gonna redo this. We have to think of ways to, you know, we have to clean it up a little bit. A lot bit. <laughs> Ah, yeah, I can, I see what you mean. You want it to look neat like Nile Red, but have the content of Nerd Rage. Well, Nile Red's not exactly neat. Right now, he's kind of becoming how-to basic with his uh, glassware destruction and, 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 you know, torturing himself for his view viewership or something, you know, with his, you know... Smelling some foul stuff and eating hot stuff and all this fun stuff. Well, I mean, it's fun. And if I was in this place, I'd probably do the same, to be honest. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? What do you see? Just, just play, honestly. Yeah. That would be a lot better, to be honest. If you were in his place, you'd focus more on the educational side of it. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm here. I I'm the least intimidating thing. They're going to look at this and be like, hey. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
together. I also wonder, when he does this reaction, is the ferrous chloride recoverable? What it? Because I don't think it is it, because you're technically reacting here to TCCA and toluene. What does it form, though? Yeah. Honestly, I don't think it matters. I'm just wondering if, like, what exactly happens to the ferrous chloride, because I think here it's being used as a reactant, given the amount he's got. It reacts directly with the TCCA and probably just forms a whole bunch of, like, crap. So I think, yeah, I don't think it's worth recovering. I think it's better just to get more steel wool. Anyway, how much... Parachlorotoluene do we need? Because ferrous chloride is the catalyst, <clears throat> then we could say that the heat simply breaks down the TCCA and allows for the transfer of the chlorine to the toluene. And we end up with some kind of various, uh, you know, we have, T we have leftover TCCA, we have DCCA, and if there's the mono one, I don't know if that exists, and a whole bunch of ferrous chloride and toluene. We'd have to find a way to separate out all, uh, you know, those cyanuric acid, you know, things and, you know, to re... I know, I'm saying... Yeah, but I'm just... Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying that is one way, cause that's a, but that's annoying, to be honest, so it's not worth it. Just wondering how they would do this industrially, you know? They would probably immobilize the ferric chloride with some kind of bentonite or some kind of, you know, clay substrate. And then if they were to use DCCA, which I highly doubt they would because they would probably just use chlorine, you know, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they wouldn't even care if the, if the, you know, the isomer thing is slightly lower because you know with big equipment you can just be like hey you know we can still sell this ortho to this guy <sighs> yeah Yeah. I think it's just the I think it's just the ferrous chloride acting as like this, you know, intermediate that then gives that chlorine into toluene. I think that's honestly what's going on. So, you know, I'm always stuffy in the morning, really. It's actually a known thing. It's very common. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. He was having an issue with the ratio of sulfuric acid causing, you know, that's why he had to do it in separate steps. But what if we could just add the sulfuric acid continuously as the reaction progresses? Therefore, we won't have to worry about his problem because in his mind, he just added everything right in, right? What if we just have an addition funnel? There you go. It solves the problem. I did. I don't know why he didn't think of that. And an addition funnel, you know, drip it in, maybe with an almost equal rate to your water removal, and it would probably work. But let's play it. Maybe he tried that too. Did he? Okay. So it didn't cross his mind because that's what we're that's what we're gonna do when we review it. Now he just drops it in. <clears> he <throat> just drops it in. Maybe. <clears throat> yeah. We're, we're not going to do, we're not going to just drop everything in because obviously the yield's going to be shit. Yeah, he's saying he couldn't add all of it at once because it will cook the, tolu the chlorotoluene and cause it to just star up. Well, we already know why. We're just going to have an addition funnel so we can add his, you know, initially that much. And then as the reaction progresses, we add the next addition, next addition, you know, or even continuously add it, you know. That would take fucking bloody forever, right? We could just, if you have an addition funnel, you could just keep adding it and say, hey, hooray, we got it. Might not even reach a one-tenth molar. One-tenth molar equivalent, though, would be like our maximum, like, you know. It, it should not cross that when we, with your addition rate. But I'm pretty sure it's going to work, you know, it's going to be self-regulating, so, you know. That's not a big problem. Also, we don't have to set up this complicated setup because I think it's just a Dean Stark, right? Or a Clevenger. What is he using exactly for this? Is it a... Is it a Dean Stark though? Because we don't have to copy this setup. We could just straight up use a Dean Stark apparatus. Oh. Yeah. I know. Yeah, this is a Dean Stark, just a homemade one, a makeshift one. And I think he's just removing water from the reaction, so our regular Dean Stark apparatus would technically work with replacing all this mess. Because, you know, this is all, all, you know, as a chemist, you think, yeah, this definitely works. But as a chemical engineer, all of this mass is wasting a lot of thermal energy. Think about it. 
more heating to get the vapors higher. Therefore, maybe the reason why he's using a one-tenth molar equivalent is because it cooks a little too. He's heating it a little too high and, and all the... One third. Yeah, but remember we have an addition funnel, so yeah, so we don't we just have to have a drip rate plus, you know. So we can do everything at once instead of multiple doing this multiple times if you think about it. Right? In fact I think it's actually good to do a slight molar excess. If if our goal really is parachlorotoluene, uh, but if you really want both, then you do a molar equivalent and check it and check again, you know. Yeah, but I honestly think the sulfuric acid itself would for sure mess with the toluene because it's it would probably oxidize it and form, you know various scrap sure yeah what about styrene don't tell me you plan to use this because styrene is kind of funny in that regard Uh, yeah, I don't think you can, you know, because styrene has two carbons. Yeah, but we don't even need to worry about that if we have an addition funnel. Because then you can just add everything slowly and it will never get to that concentration where it starts to react. Yeah, and we just constantly remove the water and we're adding more sulfuric acid at a slow enough rate. Therefore, we can do everything at once. Instead of this, think about it. We optimize his steps right. Yeah. I... Yeah. Yeah. Scrubber, scrubber, scrubber. That's all I will say. Yeah. Oh yeah, Erlen Meyer flask with the rubber stopper. It's a makeshift gash washing bottle as they call it. Do you get the Venturi to power it though? Like the aquar like either from the aquarium pump, like built in, or are you making it yourself? AKA just maybe a small, yeah, a small centrifugal pump, and you know, yeah, that would work as well. And and a nozzle that you just fit in there, and then and then just drill a hole at the sides, you know, just in the gap at which. So that it will then suck in some air when you run the pump. Because that would be how you do it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, but you remember that Dean Stark traps, they have a drain. You can drain out whatever, right? So we could also make it so that once we get a certain amount of water, we can have a drip rate out of the Dean Stark at a very slow enough rate so that we can have continuous removal of water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have the three-way version, right? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. If you have a three-way Claisen adapter as well, you could do the uh, sulfonation with an addition funnel with the sulfurics. Like, that would actually be nice. <clears throat> the radical chlorination. I wouldn't recommend doing it exactly like that way. I think at the more diffuse light source would be better in a longer tube. Like, you know, I would put it up at the condenser, maybe, you know, or at least we get the tube or something, because this looks cringe. Think about it. It's like, holy shit, you know. Also, I. Uh, do we have to use like a 400 fucking nanometer light source or can we use lower? Like, cause like, well, we could use a UVB lamp, like, you know, what they use for forensics, right? Like they do have UVB mercury bulb lamps for forensics. Could be used. Imagine. Uh, let me check it out. Because I'm pretty sure you could buy a UVB lamp. Ah, uh, sunlight. I mean, yes, we, that's a possibility, but that's unreliable. Because what if the clouds ruin your synthesis? Oh, they do have UVB lamps for skin care. There are quite literally these lamps that are used for tanning. You need like these tanning lamps. Philips tanning lamp. No, no, no. Reptile lamp. The thing with reptile lamps is they have a wide... They, their, their, their emission is very wide. But if you get a tanning lamp, it's more narrow. Heck, why didn't Tom get a tanning lamp? Like, really? I found something, by the way. This uh, UVB kit. I think this is a reptile lamp. 
Yeah, it is a reptile lamp, actually. Yeah, it, it does exist. But I think this one is a different... Uh, this one doesn't have as much other light. It's just UVB. So yeah, you want to get the fluorescent ones. Do not get UVC. Like, seriously. Fucking hell, imagine. Get UVC. That's so cursed. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, and we can use higher intensity light. Hey, you want to know what's kind of funny, right? Nerd Rage is using uh, UV LEDs, right? Tom, in his uh, Cubane synthesis, is also using UV LEDs. But Nerd Rage knows better because he's clearly using a heat sink rated for it and is driving it directly with his power supply. But knows the exact running like you know conditions. Meanwhile, Tom was just brute forcing his. I'm like, you're gonna burn them out, you know. Alright, let's continue.
Yeah. No, I'm not talking about wavelengths. I'm talking about watts. Let's we're not gonna do we're not gonna be able to get two hundred nanometer light through borosilicate anyway. Even if you get like a <clears throat> UVC light source, only the UVB is gonna pass through. So it would actually work if we use a germicidal tube, but we'd be wasting a lot. Well, to be honest, the UVB lamps are literally just UVC lamps with a coating, if you think about it. So if you use a UV... No, 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 that's not... I know exactly what's going to happen. It would fuck other things up. Those will directly fucking oxidize. Yeah, but but you could actually use a germicidal tube attached to that condenser. Anyway, the uh, borosilicate will block all of the UVC. Like, completely. It will. So it could work still. If you really have nothing else, it will work. But it's going to be very dangerous. Because you will be exposed to the UVC. If you know you don't have it properly shielded, at least your reagent won't. <laughs> yeah, aluminum foil and wear glass glasses. You know, I'll be honest. I'd rather wear a proper rated laser goggles that could also block. You know. Anyway, let's play it. Yeah, I would honestly. Welding goggles is actually meant for that. Proper ones, not the opaque welding goggles. <clears throat> I know I remember that. Well, you can. It depends on the type of welding goggles. I found one that actually reflects the laser light. Like, almost completely. But only for blue lasers. Yeah, it depends on the welding goggles. Some of them use the exact same, you know material as laser goggles but you know just shifted to a different wavelength but blue is still included in that range anyway so but other welding goggles just become opaque or just absorb uv light with some kind of like reversible pigment similar to those other things you know those will not work yeah <clears throat> that will not work. Anyway, we should we continue, yeah. Honestly, this step isn't very crazy, but I can see at the sodium cyanide uh, step, it makes sense how melamine could fuck this up. I mean, think about it. You're going to end up with fucking something else with that, right? It would definitely, like, fuck this entire thing up and, and cause it to just be this bulky shit reagent that you get from this, right? This is why we have to separate out the decomposition products from the cyanate, but we already talked about that. Anyway, let's continue. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, because sodium chloride is less soluble in acetone than potassium chloride. Yeah, it will definitely work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you recover. Why the hell was this yield 12%? Let's see what went wrong. That's horrible. What the fuck happened? Is that his overall yield or is that his yield? <clears throat> Dude, we gotta fix that. Uh, do you think it's because of melamine? To think about it. So what the hell happened then? What did he do wrong? Maybe it's a potassium salts not being as soluble. Or he... Let's... Yeah. We have to think of a better separation step than that. <clears throat> If I'm going to be honest. Right, let's see. He just adds everything at once. Okay. So... Right. Yeah. All right, let's see what's happening. We have to dry the acetone if we want to make this even better, by the way. But I don't, I think that's hard, so I don't think it matters. We have to dry the acetone if we want to make this even better, by the way. But I don't I think that's hard, so I don't think it matters. Does it strictly have to be an acetone? Because <clears throat> I know this I know that uh I'll tell you something. I know that definitely we can use we can use anhydrous ethanol. You know why? Because it's even less soluble in anhydrous ethanol. I don't think you're going to find it. Sodium iodide. And yeah, we just use ethanol. Screw using acetone. Unless 
We'll try using ethanol. What about sodium? Look, sodium chloride is insoluble in ethanol. That's what I use to separate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From any other junk, right? After the UV step. Anyway, we could just use ethanol. Like, I don't, unless maybe sodium cyanide or some other weird shit, you know, but I'm pretty sure he could have just used ethanol instead of acetone. And we will, we will have a higher heating rate. Higher heating rate means the reaction will happen much better. So we'll try it with ethanol. Maybe we're missing something, but I'm pretty sure you could use ethanol instead. Maybe he couldn't get, like, anhydrous ethanol, which is why he resorted to this. That's all I can see it. Higher temperature, therefore get fucking better than 12% yield. Oh, wait. We try all of this anyway, you know, to be honest. And we could even stream each one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, we already know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that step. That's pretty self explanatory. So, that sodium iodide is a catalyst. Maybe the product is heat sensitive. Maybe that's why he doesn't want to use ethanol. It could be. Oh, wait, let's play it. Let's play it. Exactly. We'll play it. We'll find out. No, it's, it's not. It's an organo night trial. Because remember, he did everything at once. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying maybe if we use ethanol, maybe at 80 Celsius it might fuck things up. We don't know. We'll we'll have to try it. Anyway, let's continue. But I honestly think ethanol is better for being real. Let's play it. What did he do there? What did he add? So he just added water. Yeah, yeah. So I can't hear it. Let's continue. Yeah, it's good. Let's go. I want to know how he purifies this. Yeah, I know. I know. That's it? Directly? He didn't he didn't do anything else? Let's play. There we go. Right. Ah.
Ah, that explains the 12%. Okay, but basically, you could technically get more yield, but this only ex Like, what, what... Yeah, he did a very slow crystallization, that's why. But he needed something pure, so there it is. And well, those crystals are so fucking huge, of course, they're that pure. Well, I mean, it's just Twitch TV, so, so wait one second. Yeah, I'll send it one second. Yeah, I could just send it from there, like... Do, 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 do not play the video like mute the volume immediately it will uh it will bug out okay, send it to him now all right. <clears throat> all right let's continue See? Honestly, I, I don't even think we need to crystallize it out. I think we just have to do that. Let's see what the other impurities are. Now that we have his NMR data, we don't need to do fucking crystallize this shit out. Well, we still will, but we don't we would we don't need to make big crystals and get twelve percent yield. We can make small crystals and vacuum filtration. Just play it. So that's really it. <clears throat> the parchloracid on nitrile. Maybe he has an other explanation of other impurities because uh, I want to know what else he found because like then we will find out what's What's up, you know? Yeah, but we have to find out what they are. Just acetone? That's not a big deal. What else? That's it? Okay, so we, 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 have an, we now have a better purification step then. Instead... 
instead of you know very low temperature or whatever or or that super temperature control make large crystals we could technically just wash it with dilute hydrochloric acid to get rid of that you know benzylamine right 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 <clears throat> and then and then, and then we just recrystallize it, but we just put it in the freezer and, and 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 vacuum filter and call it good, and that should get rid of the acetone, if there is still any in there, or as if it will even. Uh... Oh, yeah, you're right. I was like, I must be like, yeah, I was just thinking, wait, oh, <clears throat> it means don't, okay, it means don't even need to react with, you know, with uh, strong mineral acids, right? They can even form salts with or, with some organic ones like acetic. You think acetic will be safe enough or will that ruin his synthesis in the next step oh someone said they can only hear one person oh god i forgot okay talk now there Shh. yeah i think uh, yeah there there you're audible now you're audible now don't worry don't worry yeah Tr try it now Um, I'll just show the NMR spectrum for yeah. uh, this really quick. Nitrile in relatively high yield. As usual, these are the aromatic peaks from the benzene ring. Give small amounts of water and the cyclical reference standard. Interestingly enough, a significant impurity is this stuff. This is perichlor, a side product of our two shunbobac substances, by perichloral washed out in a purity that now appears in our spectrum. Actually, remove this stuff by washing again with some dilute hydrochloric acid. This reacts with the amines and converts them to water soluble salts. Before I do that, though, oh, actually, um, ready for you next month. Anyway, oh no, this was the wrong one. Uh, I thought, um, I don't know how to read an MR spectrum, but uh, I thought like this one here would be acetone and so in. In a comment on his uh, the last video, uh, acetone was a sort of impurity. Oh. And someone said that they use acetone to clean NMR tubes sometimes, and it can show up in spectrums. Ah. So, yeah. Anyhow, I guess moving on. Um, uh, you there? I'm oh. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so next would be um, sodium hydroxide, magnesium. But I'll skip this one out because well, don't you really need to do that. Uh, methanol on molecular sieves makes sodium molecular um, methoxide. Uh, molecular sieves would actually absorb water and push the reaction forward to form methoxide, but sodium metal is always better. Um, yeah, and um, chloroform and sodium methoxide would form uh, trimethyl also form it. I think he had decent yields for this, though, if I recall correctly. Well, this is the um, condensed video, so... Oh, also, what he did here as well is he used, um... Uh, let me go back to this. To form um, his chloroform, he he used um, methyl ethyl ketone, which would form sodium propionate and chloroform. But he also used this sodium propionate to yeah. um, to make propionic acid. Well, what's really funny is this, okay? Uh, okay, by this for a bit of context, 
I feel like Hulky Sun is really difficult to get, and um, well, it's a rare, in my opinion, and um, uh, this reaction, it'll be more expensive this way. So, this is what I found online. I'm preparing it for bread. And they sell this in huge bags, actually. Which is really good. So this would be my source of um, propionic acid, but I'll just um, convert it to uh, sodium propionate and then react that with sulfuric acid. That would be my um, yeah. step for um, propionic acid, basically. So you're just gonna buy calcium propionate, then you can then you don't even need to use methyl ethyl ketone for this step. You can use acetone. Yeah. Yeah, I could use that. That'll do even better. Honestly. In my opinion. And just buy yeah. that bread fucking making stuff or whatever it is. I mean if you see the amount of uh, work he put into uh, just... I saw it. Yeah. It's just horrible. Yeah. And it was probably even more expensive to do it that way too. Yeah, and just buying some bread making whatever. Yeah, they use it as a mold inhibitor. Um Oh, for um chloroform, what I think I'll do is um this make um my own bleach and it's quite it's quite good though i'm not sure if you've seen this video did you uh have you seen this video before yeah i've seen it yeah yeah. So, I'm just gonna. Yeah, I guess I'll do this. I'm just gonna write in the uh, science general. Okay, sure. Just gonna write some stuff yeah. in science general. You know? Okay. That's right. So you've got pink, but that makes sense. Pink? Ping. Where? Just, On just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna put this here. Oh. Streaming. There we go, so we can get people to watch easy. It's okay, just let's, let's just continue. They, they, so we'll get more. Alright. Yeah, yeah, I just did that. Just go. Let's go. Um, I think I'll do this method for... Well, actually, this... Well, I think I have a better idea for Fisher esterification, but I don't know if you might like it. What is it? It involves um this. Let's see what this. I'm not gonna say anything. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So um. If you look at propionic anhydride. Um, a method to produce this would be um. To well, I think we also spoke about it in our last stream as well. Yeah. To use uh, to react to um, Dude, acid. So you you were afraid of working with chlorine in in uh, closed ground glass, but you're not you're not you're okay with the other stuff. You know, I'll be honest uh, though. No. <laughs> no, I'm actually really terrified of this even more. 
And um, yeah, I man, to do it, but do it outside mm. and scrubbers and manometers. If you don't have at least three of those things set up correctly, I would not. Those manometers are going to be your fucking lifeline, basically, because they will tell you whether or not the main thing is operating at positive pressure, neutral, or negative pressure. You want it to just be slightly under neutral so that you don't end up with... Because if that you know what that means? If you're at slightly under neutral pressure, it means that if you do have a leak, instead of uh, ketene going out, air will go in, which is better. Of course, you can't have too yeah. much air because you do have a lamp in there too. So, you know, but still, it's safer than than fucking dying. So, you know, you let the scrubbers <laughs> deal with than all. Dying. Yeah, man, it's safer than dying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you have to have plants in case shit goes wrong, like a kill switch for the lamp and all of that, you know. And, like, some way to, yeah. like, just, you know, throttle the scrubber all the way. Who cares if it goes all the way to negative? It's like a fucking purging, you know, setup. And have, like, a one-way yeah. check valve at the inlet that that's and another valve behind it that can be opened to purge the system safely. Once it's at negative pressure. I know this is sounding more like a homemade industrial, you know, setup rather than a chemistry setup where you have check valves, manometers, and scrubbers. But if you're going to work with that, please get those things, like, seriously. Because it is I mean, indeed safer than dying. I actually would not, like, even do chlorine with a proper scrub scrubbing system. No, it's actually like, pretty safe really with like that. It's, uh, it's a lot safer than this. Uh, I'll be honest. I, mean, like, I have a lot of trauma with chlorine. Yeah, yeah. And and, chlorine and dioxide. So you have trauma with chlorine and chlorine dioxide, but you're still planning to do this other stuff, man. You know, the scrubbers, man. I'd honestly test the scrubber system with chlorine first. You know? <laughs> Let's be real. That would be the best way, you know. If it smells like cherries, you've done something wrong. Think about it. Cherries? Like chlorine smells like cherries, at least for me. Really? Yeah, it's like a fruit. It's like it's like if you've ever smelled cherry cola, except it hurts. What kind of cherries you smelling? <laughs> <laughs> well, chlorine dioxide smells like honey, but people seem to disagree. What? No, it really smells like sweet honey, but it hurts. It's irritating. It like no, it's it a genet like it's it's genetic. Some people smell only the decomposition products, which is chlorine and. Oxygen radicals. Is it oxygen radicals? I think it's just oxygen. I think it. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, but or yeah. or they just smell the you know the actual chlorine dioxide, which smells like honey. Chem player also said it smells like honey, which I'm surprised. You know he's. Oh God. So we both have the weird thing, and also bromine smells like feet. It does for me at least. <laughs> Same with iodine. Really? Okay, yeah. whatever. Let's continue. <clears throat> yeah, really. Anyhow, yeah, back to um, uh, this chloroform and sodium methoxide reaction. Yeah. Well, you actually saw what happened to it, right? Like it, like it just boil out of control and just like pop. Oh yeah, it was uh, funny. I actually have it here. Uh, where is it? Okay, right here. Yeah. 
That's hilarious. Very, very hilarious. I mean, I guess it, the wuss was probably with um, uh, ferrous chloride. Like, that was really nasty. Like, yeah. Somewhere around here. Yeah, right here. Oh my god. Oh god. That's hilarious. Yeah. Let's not let's not let that happen. Yeah. If. I mean like I, I would have cloth to clean for a video and well wouldn't want that. Not only that, if you if you have cloth, wouldn't like you'd have holes in that cloth. Dealing with fucking halogen mixtures, right? Who knows? You'd probably have holes in it. Oh yeah, um, the fabric is. Um, yeah, it depends on the fabric, the but I'm pretty sure you're gonna have not. You're gonna have no fabric. You're gonna have holes and and sadness, and probably end up buying new fabric. <laughs> depends on what it's made of, though. If it's cotton, it should be fine. Yeah. If it's anything else, well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I guess let's, we'll just wrap, wrap up like the final reactions. Yeah, please. let's do that. Safer yeah, than dying. 100% <laughs> safer than dying. Knowing me, I might just want to die if that actually. Like, no, come on. Up my cloth. <laughs> I mean, you know how that is gonna be to clean. Like... Yeah, well, let's let's uh let's do proper fucking stuff so that don't happen, right? So. And what's even worse is you're gonna have to take um the washing water probably and um boil that down. <laughs> <laughs> to the socket extractor. We're going to make two paracorophenyl, three oxopentane nitrile. First, we start with 300 milliliters of methanol, dry and distilled from molecular sieves 3A, as I've shown in a previous video. Set up on top a reflux condenser. Now I'll get 15 grams of sodium <coughs> metal. I have all the sodium into wires like this so we can drop into the condenser. I actually don't know how he did this actually. It's so that's not hard. It's it's easily rollable. He probably just rolled it on a table, honestly. I that's how I would like do it. Yeah, sodium oh, is plastic. yeah, sodium is quite it's really, really like malleable. You could literally treat it like play doh and it would work. Maybe a little harder force, but it would do this. Very explosive oh play though. One, drop them in with the cooling water turned on. Yeah. Don't drop in too much at once or the well, I'll just skip ahead of it. So he just distills off the excess and gets the solid sodium methoxide. Makes sense. How dinky his setup it is, it's kinda cute. Um, what I would have here as well, like when he when he has like he does this in I think in two steps, like heat something dry and stop us the flask. Yeah. But what what does he do is if like if you're in a, an area like me, and where it has like what, I think seventy five percent humidity. Yeah, your humidity is really high. I don't think this will even. Well, or ninety percent when we last checked it. Yeah. I don't remember how much it was. 95 maybe but it was really high and um like if if i were to open this flask in my humidity 
That would be really. Yeah, uh, you have to you have to find a way to do it. <laughs> Everything in one step. Yeah. I think an addition funnel is what you have to go with. With a drying I mean, like no. trap uh, attached to the end. Yeah. yeah and have a Claisen like adapter hooked up over there. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, that's an addition funnel moment. Yeah. And um, he, I don't think he used um, any drying trap with these um, refluxing. Yeah. I wonder if it's like that for um, the rest of these reactions as well. Like, what if you start like on a really large scale and then? Well, the beds, like, uh, you know, those reactions that foamed over. If you're gonna set up on a large scale, you need more control. But those other ones that don't, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, after all, it's a job to see which reactions are scalable as your chemical engineers. You know that you would, you, if you were working on like a actual plant, like you're asked to scale up a lab process. You try to find out everything about it: how much heat it produces, how much heat you need to put in, how big, you know, all those, the requirements are. Given all those parameters, you design the appropriate setup, and 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 Bob's your uncle gets some poor sap to build it <laughs> or install it. What I found I a really interesting um method for stirring like well foaming especially. Yeah. Is like um to keep stirring really high. Well yeah. And, um, if if it starts foaming, like um what you could do is like instantly turn off stirring and lower heat um the heating mantle. Yeah. And well that pretty much solves it all. Yep. It would give you like uh maybe thirty seconds to a minute. Of um, well, control. Like if you leave the heat on, obviously it would start like foaming. But yeah, and uh, also like adding boiling chips help. But uh, I in either way, I also have um something called uh, like uh anti foam adapter, like a splash trap. Oh yeah, that's so, good. Or like even a uh, um. Like chromatography reservoir above it, so that like whatever foam rises up, it has like an extra 500 mil of space to go. I'd like to personally so. thank Offset for emailing me what new problems I was encountering with foam water stirred for tech because I found the mixture solidified to close to hand. Okay. I turn off the heating by 25% for a show the reaction mixture was right. I did just pour it out first because I found the mixture solidified to the cool. 
adding water first helps make it easier to work with. Once it's all in the beaker along with one meter of water, stir it for 10 minutes or so to thoroughly inspect the chemicals. Now add 100 milliliters of 30% or 10 molar hydrochloric acid and keep stirring for another 10 minutes. Turn off the stirring and let it settle. What we're doing is neutralizing the sodium hypoxide to sodium chloride and methanol. The sodium chloride and methanol are very soluble Um, I don't know if it's worth um, getting rid of the dioxy and you think so? No, 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 let's not. Because it does seem yeah. like it's bothersome. Are you hearing these frogs yes. in my background? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing those two. It's okay. Just keep playing. Uh. I think you've seen this already, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this makes me laugh! We can, we can get guanidine from, from, like, if we look at explosions in fire, or even reactive and chem and DBX labs, you can get guanidine from... From you know, I've I've seen synthesis of because he makes guanidine for obviously making energetics, but to, you, I think he can make it from urea and a few other things as well. It's totally possible. Someone made guanidine. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Camp player made it. Yeah, a camp player. But I'm pretty sure we will find like I'm pretty sure I think another. I think it's either. Uh, DBX labs or or a reactive chem that also made guanidine. I and I remember DBX watching a boring. video on on making guanidine. Yeah, it was um. That's amino guanidine, amino -guanidine. but but he also made. Something else, like he also made guanidine chloride. Really? Yeah, someone made guanidine chloride. I think it was someone else. I think that was Ned Rage. Hydrochloride. No, 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 no. There it is. There it's make tri. No, there's triamino guanidine chloride. Uh, can we convert it? Okay. No, we have an amine. I don't think. No, no, no. We cannot. We cannot because, because guanidine yeah, no is. Uh, is there a way though that we can, we can make something else? Like, is there a freaking way? Um. <laughs> guanidine. Uh... What's the best way to make it? Instead of hair relaxants. Is there anyone who, who made it in Science Madness? Because I'll be honest. Oh, uh, 
preparation. Whoa, um, I thought it even smoked to say a meth oxide. Uh, it's just in water yeah, freebies. Gonna simple add a guanidiniums. Oh, yeah, yeah, guanidinium, guanidinium salt, like guanidinium chloride. Right? To yep. Is there a better way though? Um, let's see. Oh, apparently heating. You this is what I was control. saying. This is what I remember. Best results found from, from, from heating. One to one to one ratios of ammonium nitrate, silica gel, and urea. Yeah, I so actually saw the video years. before. He had a, a video on it. Uh, it there was, was a video. Oh. Yeah, Paul Verone. But Paul Verone. there was a video of someone doing this exact synthesis. This is what I mean. Instead of getting it from a hair relaxant. <laughs> yeah. I know these guys want to make explosives, but that's not our goal. Our goal is to make fucking anti-cat boy drugs. <laughs> you can make a uh, Yeah, just just cook some piss and some silica jag. Cook some piss and cat litter. Get it? Cause cause silica gel. Oh my. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. They sell those as catalysts, like crystal catalyst. Yeah, yeah. I can't, dude. I can't actually, find find that here. I have to order it online. You you can just get silica gel from other sources, but but that's a joke. We make anti cat boy drugs, but we need cat litter and and uh, and and piss to make anti cat boy drugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another way is apparently this. Um, Patent, yeah, Wait. check it. I don't even download um, it now. I think it's bug. Just, just look up the patent number or something, and you'll find it. Okay. US two two three zero eight two seven. Wait, what? What did you do? You went to my. I think you're. Uh, US 223 0 27. Just. I want Produced from calcium, calcium cyanide. Oh my god, that is so difficult to make, though. Yeah, I think the cat litter version is better. Yeah, cyanide is like, I think Tom um, heated um stuff, urea and some stuff. Because yeah, I know Tom uh, made calcium cyanide. It was a really big pain. I imagine, but then he, we'll then try he this method. We'll try this method. The other method, the the one where you have to heat up some cat litter. Yeah, this sounds way better. You saw this um video on this. I, I've never seen that. Before. I've seen the video, but I don't. I think I don't think it's up anymore. If you know what I mean. Let's just say he needed this 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 thing for other stuff. For redacted, because obviously that's what what's what these guys are using it for. Yeah. Isn't um Roscoe Bonadine now banned from um? Yeah. Science Madness. Yeah. Yes. God. Oh yeah, I remember what they were using it for. They were using it to make something called Keto RDX or some shit. 
whatever that is. They say it's like a more yeah. powerful version of RDX because of that like it has a better oxygen balance because of the ketone. If you say if you hear no, keto RDX, it sounds like some health supplement, but it's not. It sounds like um like some kind of drug. Steroid. Yeah, it kind of sounds like some kind of drug. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I'll try this then. Uh, I haven't got... Uh, I don't have any ammonium nitrate or silica gel on me, but... I guess I uh, have some... Maybe we can try ammonia. another ammonium salt to get another salt of guanidine. Because we they're making guanidine nitrate. We don't give a fuck what kind of guanidine we get. Because we're gonna freebase it anyway. What if you try ammonium chloride or ammonium sulfate? Probably uh, chloride would be a lot chloride. safer because sulfate uh, was, you know, be... ammonium chloride might decompose on heating though. Because we're going to heat this up to 190. We need an ammonium salt that does not decompose mm. at that temperature. I would think ammonium sulfate ammonium. is probably the best. Yeah, ammonium chloride also um, sublimates. Yeah, yeah, not ammonium. Ammonium sulfate is what we need. Yeah. Uh, melting point 328. Well, we could. Honestly, I think we could. We could try ammonium chloride. Because, like I said, we're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When What does the sublimate at, though? So, ammonium sulfate is really the best. I mean, we're not here to make keto RDX or anything. We're here to just. It's retarded. We're not. Okay, we're not here to so it doesn't good. matter what ammonium salt we use you know yeah that's no problem uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure ammonium nitrate decomposes quickly as well um, I, I just, I'm just uh, no we probably would have to use ammonium nitrate Ah, yeah, because it does. Yeah, you you have nitric ammonium. acid, man. You can you can you can make a little bit of ammonium nitrate. Yeah, I could spare a bit of nitric acid. Yeah, man. But then again, remember, um, it's the idea is to get it from um, over the counter sources. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Well, that's gonna be difficult. Let me let me think of an idea. Over the counter, yeah. over the counter. Ah, uh, do it. They are nitric, like I mean, here. So here's a fertilizer. yeah, yeah. They there are uh, cold packs, right? You could like make that yeah. argument, and 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 if that's not enough for you, why not just do an Oswald, <laughs> oh. or do a DBX is uh yeah, yeah, yeah. DBX is ammonium <laughs> nitrate membrane electrolysis moment. There you we go. There's no. He did. He not DBX. It was uh, it was scrap science. Someone did it. A mo nitrate. Oh yeah, it was him. Yeah, Definitely scrap science. Fucking. I tried it by the way. I think you actually need an ice bath because I tried it and I got nothing. Because I he it you know it's hard because I'm running a lot of current through mine and you need an ice bath to actually make it viable. Which makes sense, but I was just like, Sukubi yeah. to be do, let's just let it rip. Hmm. That was a mess, yeah. I still have to oh, clean it up. If you don't have a yeah. yeah. Um, I have to, I have yeah, to clean it up cool. still, by the way, it's still sitting there. I'll just wait for it to all dry out before even touching it. I'm scared of it right now. It's got a whole bunch of other crap in it. Yeah. Um once Urea. Yes. Urea should be Urea easy might, to um, get, honestly. It is, but like you think the urea might just melt on ammonium sulfate might dissolve in it? 
Yeah. Might. We may be able to push the temperature to like uh, uh, 235C, but I don't know. I, we have to know the reaction scheme of the ammonium nitrate method. Because um, if the, does the ammonia itself react? Like, yeah, we have to know the reaction I mean, scheme. Because if we know the reaction scheme, I mean, we can find out whether or not it, it reacts. Wait, wait. Uh, see, apparently... Uh, yeah, there's no danger of explosions. I think they say that ammonium chloride works. No, no, they said ammonium chloride works, but your yield is 25%. 25, yeah. I mean, uh, okay. that's not bad. Granted, everything is cheap. And we don't have to worry because um, they say that there's a risk of an explosion because, you know. Ammonium nitrate, yeah. Ah, so okay, it. So. You're technically replacing that sucks, with the yeah. fucking ammonia. I mean. Amine. Amide or imide. I don't okay, know what so the hell it's called. Uh, imide, yeah. Is it amide or imide? I think it's imide. I, th I think it's imide, man. Yeah, it's definitely imide. Yeah. Not amide. Yeah, it's imide. Yeah. See, it is imide. imide. I was right. Yeah. Uh, guanidine, NH. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what a reaction would be like. Probably this, just this NH would come off. It has three extra hydrogens, and I would go. Well, we know two would probably leave as water, but where would that that extra one? Go? I don't fucking know. The silica gel is the drying agent. Uh, yeah. Ammonium carbonate, phosphate, and sulfate did not work, but chloride and bromide worked. May oh, maybe it goes. The extra hydrogen forms HCl. It's possible. Uh, but I then wouldn't that react and form the salt of the thing? So where does it leave? Exist, like hydronitrates, like like no sorry. no. Uh, I know a guanidine would form like a hydrochloride. Yeah. Like guanidine chloride. Like it forms like a hydrochloride. Like this. So I don't know if it'd be like guanidine and HNO3. <laughs> No, no, no. It would form guanidine way. nitrate, but probably there's going to be excess nitric acid at the end, I think. That's probably what's going to happen. Yeah, I was right. Uh, uh, one hydrogen would, well, attach to this e the imide group, and it'll have uh, NO3 anion. Yeah. So that, that would make sense, I guess, because... It's like that for um, guanidine chloride. Like, yeah. What? Well, look at look at this here. Yeah. Example. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's how it works. Then you're just somehow kicking that off with some piss, if you know what I mean. God damn it. Yeah. Carbonate yeah. make it makes sense why carbonate wouldn't work. Carbonate wouldn't work because I don't think the carbonate salt of you know. Of guanidine is, I mean, uh, is acidic enough. It does not. It will not work. It will not work, and I know why. It's not going to be acidic enough, so therefore it will not yeah, form. Um, and also, I think it's a valency problem. I think because carbonate and sulfate, I think, are divalent. It 
does not yeah. really like to form neatly like that. But if we yeah, if we look at the if we look at nitrate and chloride, those are monovalent. So that's probably why it works as well. I think valency has a big factor. Not only that, but um, ammonium carbonate. Oh yeah, yeah. well that's obviously that obviously yeah. that's not gonna work. Why did they ha why did they try it? You literally go there and you look at it and you're like, how the fuck is this gonna work? Well, they probably tried it and and. Uh, I think you tried it just for kicks why because am I, why am I doing this, right? <laughs> Yeah. Ammonium phosphate, yeah, that's clearly not going to work. Why would you try that? That's trivalent. You make your problem 10 times worse. You probably just... Guanidine could be um, three guanidines would act as um, a positive ion. You know, the only thing I can think of you, ammonium phosphate is fucking making white phosphorus from it, but that's another funny process. First of all, you have to convert it into sodium phosphate first. That might be a bit challenging to get, though. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying it just because. But yeah, I think ammonium chloride is your best bet. I don't care if it's like 25% or cheap anyway. It's better than buying botanicals hair relaxants. <laughs> 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 Apparently they have the carbonate in it, but botanicals yeah, hair fun. relaxants. <laughs> yeah, but we still has a lot of other stuff. Oh too, my like, god, like, we still can't use uh, we still can't use guanidine like you still get ammonium carbonate because like as you said it decomposes right so it wouldn't have worked anyway yeah. unless, I mean, unless no 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 you cannot you high cannot pressure. high pressure <laughs> let's fucking put it in a pipe bomb reactor and just fuck it <laughs> no that would work actually think about it. that would work oh <laughs> you just get a pipe bomb style reaction vessel put your silica gel piss and and other piss component and throw it in the <laughs> oven and then and cover your ears and wait two hours in anxiety. What? As well? Like, I actually have a pipe bomb reactor. Like, well, if, okay, it's not a pipe bomb, but... I know, it, pressure reactor. Uh, pressure reactor, but, I mean, like, I, I, um, a friend asked if um, I was willing to do a melamine synthesis. Hey, I mean, I if it like, works, what if we could revisit ammonium carbonate <clears throat> with that setup? Like, it could actually work at that point. If we have it in a pressurized environment, we could potentially, you know, because like I'd, ammonium nitrate is cursed. Let's even said risk of explosion if you try to cook ammonium nitrate with this stuff. I mean, that's fucking scary, right? I know ammonium chloride works, but the yield is shit. I think ammonium carbonate and, and funny pipe bomby reactor probably is the safest way. The safest way with big, big, big quotations that have a good yield. Depending on whether or not your setup even works. God damn it. I'd still put it under shielding at least, man. Yeah. I mean, this guy, um, Applied Science, pretty much used these... Um pipes that you get at hardware stores. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's made some fucking exactly. nano materials from literal pipe yeah. bomb style setups. Except, of course, you don't want them to blow up. Yeah, I think he also um, did one with super critical um, carbon dioxide. Yeah, I the, remember uh, this. I remember from this. From coffee. And I thought, yeah, like, wow. That's what? how you do it. <clears throat> yeah. Super cool. Like, there it is, folks. Purified caffeine. Nile Green it's wants like to know your location. Nile Green. That's what I meant, cause he wanted cool. to extract caffeine, right? Nile Green. It's a parody. It's the parody guy. <clears throat> oh, oh yeah, I saw those videos. 
honestly, Nile Red didn't look too happy about it on um, the Safety Tid stream. It's your boy. It, it didn't. It didn't seem so. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the water would stay separate down at the bottom of the chamber there. So I measured out about 200 milliliters of water and poured that into the chamber like in a kitchen geez. like steamer, like. <laughs> Sort of fucking the chamber, and a bit of fucking pipe bomb. Oh, there are types of um, PTFE tapes like that would be meant for this. Like, um, well, I think what would be best is like those PTFE tapes for um, oxygen cylinders. Yeah. Like, yeah, that should work really well. Dude, imagine. Well, we're, we're, we started from a nerd rage pyrimethamine synthesis optimization. And now we're looking at fucking autoclave reactors. It's getting funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we remember we have the same goal. It has to be from the home. We're not. We're not getting botanicals hair relaxants. When I saw this video, I laughed. Dude, you can. You oh, can actually. Like we Dude, like, like, uh, I don't know how your hair looks like, but imagine, would you use such a product? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. No, I, I mean, would say definitely I not. I've seen my hair on stream before. It's curly uh, as my heck. My hair is like, yeah, well, wavy, uh, like this. Wavy hair. Yeah. Yeah, somewhat like this. Dude, imagine like using this. hair relaxants. You'd become totally straight. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. I mean, a friend, a friend suggested it, but nah, I'm Dude, good. I mean, no, 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 no. Just, just, just get the relaxants from him and say, this is my source of guanidine carbonate. <laughs> <laughs> what if, like, they send me, like, botanicals here, relaxant, but in, to spite me, they're just like, Take all the guanidine from it. And just say it doesn't work? There you go. <laughs> That's the cheapest way. Get your friends to buy it. <clears throat> yeah. Oh my god. But... Uh, it's just so funny. That's like 50 milliliters of it. Um, what, what what happened as well is like this guanidine it may be impure as well because when he um, filtered it through here um, yeah there was a fucking slime slime so it could it could have other products in this as well too so yeah it's not worth using hair relaxants. Look at that crap. Yeah. I'm not exactly certain which additive it is, but whatever it is, I don't want my plant any fluoride. Dude, that's some fucking. Now we vacuum the solar solution to get dry one in fluoride. Yeah. My vacuum source. And he has to vacuum distill it as well. Think about that madness. Yeah, exactly. I set my hot plate to about 130 Celsius and also enclosed the boiling flask in a foil shroud to keep the heat in. After the last drop comes over, let it run for another hour to ensure the guanidine chloride is as dry as possible. Then quickly transfer to an airtight container. And there it is, guanidine chloride. Methanol that was dried over the 
Oh, uh, this is um the Deacon Stark drawing of like the Oxopantian Nitro, I think. Oh yeah. Tap on top of Deep Stark apparatus and reflective flask. Yeah. We add in the back up. Interestingly enough, if you watch closely, you'll see the liquid level decreasing despite efficient refluxing. What's happening is we're losing methyl formate as it flows out. Methyl formate has oh, those frogs are really annoying, but... Oh, well. Those are frogs? Yeah. I thought those were people sawing or doing some kind of woodwork. Those are frogs? <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Oh my like, really god. Frogs. Oh god damn, man. There's a lot of meat on them. Like, imagine, like, you go down level. I, I, I have a down, like, downstairs. And, like, imagine you go downstairs in the middle of the night and, like, one big frog just jumps on your leg. Damn. <laughs> Anyway, we should continue. We're approaching the freaking home stretch, man. The entirety yeah. of our enol ether reaction mixture. The excess sodium methoxide will react with the sulfuric gas and turn it into <clears throat> sodium solvate. The excess beyond that will flip the acidic conditions of the enol ether formation to the strongly alkaline conditions we need for the guanidine reaction. I'll put the reflux condenser back on and start refluxing the mixture. What we're doing here is reacting guanidine with the enol ether to form a pyrimidine ring. This is the final reaction in making pyrimethamine. The reaction is slow, so you'll need to reflux for a long time. I left this going for 36 hours. And here we are 36 hours later. Turn off the heating, let it cool. And now we need to start the complicated process of separating out the pyrimethamine. Take off the reflux condenser and assemble a distillation setup around the mixture. Now distill off about 100 milliliters of liquid or so. Now turn off the heating and add in 100 milliliters of water. Turn the heating back on and keep boiling off more solvent. I want to essentially remove as much of the organic solvent as I can and replace it with water. I did simply boil down dry earlier because I don't know how sensitive pure methamine is to heat. If I boil dry, I could destroy the pure methamine. Adding in the water first means we can remove the solvents and still remain below the boiling point of water. Keep boiling until the distillate temperature goes past 90 Celsius. At this temperature, most of the methanol will have boiled off, and conveniently, toluene and dioxane will also boil off since they form azeotropes with water below this temperature. Now turn off the heating and let it cool. Now we add in 23 grams of sodium hydroxide and stir. I want to make the water even more polar so it will absorb all the highly polar impurities but reject the non-polar impurities. Now place the mixture on an ice bath and let it cool. Once it's cold, we add in 150 milliliters of diethyl ether that I extract from starter fluid. Add in another 200 milliliters of water and let it stir for about half an hour. Turn off the stirring and let it settle. And there we go, this is much better. We have a clean aqueous layer that dissolves all the salts and other polar side products and contaminants. And in the upper ether layer is where all the non-polar impurities collect. In the middle is a layer of pure methamine. It has only minor solubility in both, so it separates into its own layer. Now we need to filter this. I first collected the middle pure methamine with a separatory funnel, but this is optional. Suction filter the mixture to get crude pure methamine. Wash it once with water and twice with ether to remove more of the impurities. Then let it dry on the filter. Scrape it off and here is our crude yield of pure methamine at 5.5 grams. To purify it further, we crystallize from ethanol. Put it on gentle heating and add ethanol while boiling until it dissolves. I found I needed about 90 milliliters of ethanol to fully dissolve my pure methamine. Once it's all dissolved, turn off the heating and let it crystallize back out. Most of it will still be dissolved in the ethanol, but what we get will be exceptionally pure. And here we go. Now filter the crystals and wash them with some ethanol. Then wash them with diethyl ether. Now leave under the vacuum stream to dry. And there we have it, two years of work. <laughs> Anti-cat boy drugs! Ugh.